Do you feel like you need to dig a little deeper into your Bible? Well, what's a better day to start than today? Hello and welcome to day four of Bible study to Christmas. If you're new here, my name's Mache and I make a variety of content ranging from my daily life to my life as a technical theatre student to creative content to, quite recently, some faith-based content. As you know, this week we are going through scriptures that are dealing with the prophecy of Jesus' birth. And if you haven't seen the previous videos, make sure to check them out. They'll either be linked above or below. As always, if you have any questions or comments or observations or even critiques, make sure to comment them down below. I would love to hear your perspectives. Just make sure to keep the comments kind and respectful to everyone because we are all learning. Now, warning, I am by no means a Bible or theology expert. The things that I will be saying in these videos are purely my perspective of what I'm reading, along with guidance from sources that I find. So, without any further babbling, grab your Bible and let's go. In today's video, we will be moving away from Isaiah and moving on to Micah chapter 5. Mobilize, marshal your troops. The enemy is laying siege to Jerusalem. They will strike Israel's leader in the face with a rod. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, are only a small village among the people of Judah, yet a ruler of Israel, whose origins are in the distant past, will come from you on my behalf. The people of Israel will be abandoned to their enemies until the woman in labor gives birth. Then at last, his fellow countrymen will return from exile to their own land, and he will stand to lead his flock with the Lord's strength in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. Then his people will live there undisturbed, for he will be highly honored around the world, and he will be the source of peace. When the Assyrians invade our land and break through our defenses, we will appoint seven rulers to watch over us, eight princes to lead us. They will rule Assyria with drawn swords and enter the gates of the land of Nimrod. He will rescue us from the Assyrians where they pour over, our, over the borders to invade our land. Then the remnant left in Israel will take their place among the nations. They will be like dew sent by the Lord or rain falling on the grass which no one can hold back and no one can restrain. The remnant left in Israel will take their place among the nations. They will be like a lion among the animals in the forest, like a strong young lion among flocks of sheep and goats, pouncing and tearing as they go, with no rescuer, rescuer in sight. The people of Israel will stand up to their foes, and all their enemies will be wiped out. In that day, says the Lord, I will slaughter your horses and destroy your chariots, I will tear down your walls and demolish your defences. I will put an end to all witchcraft and there will be no more fortune tellers. I will destroy all your idols and sacred pillars, so you will never again worship the work of your own hands. I will abolish your idol shrines with their Asherah poles and destroy your pagan cities. I will pour out my vengeance on all the nations that refuse to obey me. So let's first briefly summarize what we just read. So this chapter serves as a testament to God's enduring faithfulness and the unfolding of his divine plan for redemption. This chapter focuses on the prophecy of the coming of the Messiah, Jesus, and even though he comes from humble beginnings, it also speaks of the promises of great deliverance through the power of obedience and trust in God's plans. So let's dig a little deeper, starting from verse 1. So verses 1 to 2 is where Micah prophesizes that Israel will be humbled by a foreign power, the Assyrians, and instead God will create a new ruler from a humble town called Bethlehem. And this ruler would obviously be Jesus. Let's talk a bit about Bethlehem and the meaning behind it and how it has such a correlation to Jesus as well. 
So Bethlehem is known as the house of bread, and Jesus, born from Bethlehem, is known as the bread of life, seen in John chapter 6 verse 35. And another word that's mentioned next to Bethlehem in verse 2, which I probably butchered, I'm so sorry, <laughs> but Epitha, um means fruitfulness and abundance. And this correlation is also interesting because our hearts have never produced fruit until they were watered with the Savior's blood. Verse 2 also mentions that this leader, this ruler, has oranges, <laughs> oranges, oh my gosh. Verse 2 also mentions that this leader has origins from a distant past. That means that although Jesus was born, or to be born, we already know he's born, but born in Bethlehem, he was created long before then. As Revelations chapter 22 verse 13 says, he is the Alpha and the Omega. So he has been there since the beginning of time. This verse reminds us that Jesus is far more than just a man and that he left the glory of heaven to come and save our souls. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was living in this perfect paradise, I don't think I would have been so willing to leave. Then verses 3 to 5 goes a bit deeper into the prophecy of Jesus' birth. We find out that he will lead these people with the Lord's strength and that he will be a source of peace. Now, in the previous um, chapters and readings that we've dealt with earlier in this week, if you haven't seen them, have also talked about how he will be the light in the darkness and that he's the Prince of Peace. So all the scriptures this week have showcased how he will be this figure of peace. Verse 5 refers to these seven leaders and eight princes. Once again, seven being the number of completion. Now, God will bless these leaders to deliver the people from their enemies, the Assyrians, and he does the same for us. God strategically places people who he blesses in our lives to help deliver us from our enemies or our battles that we have. Now, from verse 7, it talks about how the remnant will be purified. So, this purification will be on a very large scale, and no one will be able to hold it back or to restrain it. Then, further in verse 8, it says it will be a powerful kind of deliverance, and according to the verse, it will be like a strong young lion. Nothing will be able to hold it back. Now lastly, verse 10 to 15, although they seem very heavy and quite scary, um, but it showcases how this deliverance will be a full and complete restoration. There will be no idolatries whatsoever. He will cut off everything, whether it's seemingly innocent like the horses and the chariots, or whether it's fundamentally bad like witchcraft or idol shrines. So now that we've analyzed this passage, what can we learn from it and what can we apply to our own lives? Once again, this passage, like our previous passages this week, have shown how Jesus will be a source of peace and hope, even in life's battles. Um, and that God will place people in our lives to help us and protect us and lead us in our spiritual journey. Now, this passage overall does seem quite heavy, but it teaches us the power of God's deliverance. God's deliverance isn't just some small thing, and I think anyone that has um, witnessed or testified to God's deliverance will tell you that it's kind of a big deal. And I think sometimes we question why certain things or people or opportunities leave our lives. Sometimes it just seems so unfair. We have to realize that sometimes you have to be broken down to be built up again. Sometimes these things will be seemingly innocent, like a person, thing, or object, and sometimes they will be fundamentally bad. But God knows how things will affect us in our lives, and it's important that we obey Him to keep ourselves safe. And often, when we look back and reflect on those times, we realize 
that once again, God was just protecting us from these things by removing them from our lives. As my best friend says, sometimes God's rejection is your protection. Thank you so much for sitting through this Bible study with me. I hope that you gained something from it. And please subscribe to stay tuned for this Bible study series so that you can get a notification every time I post the video and you can do your little Bible study. Um, and if you have any comments, questions, queries, or even corrections, feel free to put them in the comments. Just keep it kind. Um, I would really love this to be a safe space for everyone. And also, please comment your favorite point or verse or literally anything that you gained from this video today. I would love to hear your perspectives. Have a beautiful and blessed day, and I will see you for day five of our Bible study to Christmas series. Bye!